Hello and welcome to my tech YouTube channel. Today we are here to talk about Elasticsearch cluster commonly known as ELK stack which includes Elasticsearch, Logstash and Kibana. ELK is a tool most widely used for observability technology that is you can monitor your logs, monitoring your infra metrics, your APM metrics that is application performance monitoring and uptime metrics for URLs. We have tools like Nagios for infra metrics, we have Greylog for logs monitoring and uh, various other tools which are open source which provides the same uh, uh, monitoring categories, right? But we have only limited amount of tools that serves all these purposes under a single roof such as New Relic, Dynatrace, Datadog, ELK, etc. Right now, before we go ahead and install and configure it on any of these servers, I would recommend you to download the packages individually from the Elasticsearch website. The reason behind it is most of the organizations do not provide internet connectivity for their servers for security reasons. Right, so it's always better that you get used to uh, download the packages individually from a server that has the internet connectivity and moving it to a server that does not have internet connectivity. That is how we are going to do it now, right? So uh, another open source tool that I'm going to use is VirtualBox. All right, so for today's demo, we would be having two virtual machines. One is a GUI Ubuntu flavor and another is the CLI version of it. Okay, and it's always better that you go to the settings and you enable two adapters for networking. One is the host only adapter and the second is NAT gateway. So what happens is host only adapter is that you get the adapter, uh, the network adapter attached to your physical machine as well. So you do the same thing over here for both the hosts, go to the networking uh, tab and go to advanced, I mean, uh, enable host only adapter. Okay. And once you enable it and you turn on your VMs, you would be finding that you would have a, a, a separate NIC, a virtual NIC, okay, which would be uh, giving you an address like this 192.168.245.1. So where do I get this address from? Uh, which is my DNS server? So for that, you would have to go to your virtual box settings. Okay, you need to go to file, you need to go to host network manager. And over here, you will find the IP address. So this is the IPv4 address of my local machine, which is going to act as a DNS server as well. So uh, whatever uh, VMs I configure and I attach my host only adapter, it is going to get in the same set. Uh, it is going to get an IP of the same subnet so that I can access my, uh, you know, uh, Kibana dashboard in my local VM as well with the IP address. OK, so uh, now what I've already done is I have already configured two VMs and I have already configured the Elasticsearch services. So as I told you, you need to download the Elasticsearch uh, packages to your VMs and then you need to push it to your VMs and you need to configure them. So I'll show you the configuration file and I'll explain a bit about it because these are the major uh, configurations you need to make the Elasticsearch up and running. So uh, these are the few options or uh, say parameters that is very much required for your Elasticsearch to work properly. Okay, so what are these? Uh, the first one is path.data. So this is where actually, in, you know, in sometimes uh, if you have a Postgres, uh, Postgres SQL database or MySQL database, you would have a, a path to store all the data of it, right? So same like that, you would be having a, uh, you would be giving a path for Elasticsearch. So that path is path.data, okay? You can customize it up to your own preference. Then the next is path.logs. Uh, as the name suggests, it's for the logs directly for Elasticsearch service. So in case anything goes wrong or your service does not run, you can troubleshoot with the logs that are inside that path. Okay. And the next thing is very important. This is the name of your node. So you can say, for example, give any kind of alphanumeric word over here. So uh, node, node name over here, I have given node one. That is my, uh, you know, the name of node one, okay? And the port on which Elasticsearch to, uh, should be served. So that is 9200, I have left it to be the default. The next is a very important thing, cluster.name. So this cluster.name should be common across all your Elasticsearch cluster nodes. So in case you change this name or if there's any uh, manipulation over here, 
your node will not get attached to your cluster. This is because uh, every cluster name that you give in the background, Elasticsearch uh, gives a unique ID for it. Okay, I'll show it to you in a bit. But for now, just understand that you need to give a cluster dot name. If you don't give cluster dot name option over here, by default, it will take it as Elasticsearch as the name of the cluster. The next thing is discovery dot seed underscore host, which is uh, in this cluster or this Elasticsearch should also discover other hosts inside the same cluster. So I have two nodes. Uh, I'm going to give both the IP addresses over here. And the next thing is network.host. So you may give the IP address over here uh, in case you don't want to publish it over the uh, network like 0.0.0, .0 or you don't want to give localhost or loopback address or something like that. So uh, I would prefer here to give the IP address of the node on which you're running the Elasticsearch. The next thing is uh, you would find that in every cluster, for example, in Redis or Solar or anything like that, uh, we give a configuration in such a way that it, it can elect its own master, right? So, and also we can tell who is eligible to become the master. So out of five nodes, you can make sure that only three nodes can become master who has a higher configuration of uh, server specs. So for example, you have three servers of 64 gigs of RAM and uh, you know more hard disks, so you can make them as the master. Like that, you can give it over here in Elasticsearch as well. So that is the option that says cluster dot initial underscore master underscore nodes. The next thing is uh, all of XPAC security things which are related to SSL that is your secured HTTP layer, right? So we'll come to that in a bit. Uh, let's come to the last two lines, which is HTTP dot compression, right? So these two are required because instead of saving your data, say for example, there's a log file of five megabytes, you want to store it inside Elasticsearch and you don't want to store it in the same uh, way, like in the same size, right? You want to compress it and keep it because you want to save some space inside your DB, that is your Elasticsearch. So here you can apply these two options so that uh, while transferring the data from your actual client nodes, say for example, logs or any kind of information, it gets compressed and gets transferred. And the last option indicates that when it reaches Elasticsearch node, inside the slash data uh, we have in Linux we have a compression type as GZ right so Elasticsearch uses the same kind of compression to store the data inside Elasticsearch so I would recommend you guys to implement these two things in case you are uh, planning to store lots and lots of data inside your Elasticsearch so this is basically how you configure your Elasticsearch node inside the Elasticsearch configuration file, which is inside slash etc Elasticsearch Elasticsearch.yaml, right? So now uh, since I had a, a Debian package, I would be using dpkg i and I would be installing it. So I have all my files over here. So one second. Okay. So I, I have all my packages over here. So I would be installing it like this. Right, so uh, since I have already installed it, I would not be installing it again. EKG. So this is the command to install your uh, package. Once it's installed, make sure that you have this configuration. I'll leave this configuration file in uh, in the description, like, you know, uh, if YouTube allows me to, right? So after installing it, place this Elasticsearch contents over here. And in case you go into some issues, you want to change the node name or cluster name and stuff like that. You're manipulating your name and cluster name, right? So make sure that you remove the contents inside data because once you start running your Elasticsearch service, it stores, it, store, it stores some metadata inside the slash data directory for Elasticsearch. Uh, say, for example, if you give a cluster name, an ID gets automatically uh, allocated for that cluster, all right? So it's always better that in case you're going to start from scratch, better you remove the data inside slash data and then you restart the service, okay? So as you can see here, I have already started the Elasticsearch service. By default, the port number is 9200. So let me check that as well. Yes, it is accessible, okay? So that's it. Uh, it is pretty much the same kind of configuration. And one other thing is that since you configure the node names, right? It's always better that you also configure it inside your hosts.
file okay like this with the ip addresses so just configure the ip address and the dns name for it so that it works perfectly fine so you do the same kind of uh, configuration except for the node name and the network host uh, thing in the other node uh, on the left side so let me show you the configuration it's pretty much the same so this is the configuration of my second node we give everything the same right and one other thing i want to also check if the log files are being created let's see yes i can see that there are a lot of log files getting created okay let's clear it out ss tulpin 9200 yes here we go so uh, also make sure that you can talk to each other okay so 192.168.245.39200 yes it's getting connected the connectivity is proper and i will also make sure that i have the entries inside my host file here we go so everything is in place now what i can do is since we enable the host only adapter i can actually view these pages inside my uh, browser in my local machine so as i said the local machines uh, the local machines ip address is also in the same subnet right so i would be using 192.168.3.9200 to check yes here we go so this is the node name this is the cluster name and as i said it has allocated a unique id for the cluster so in case you're changing the name of your cluster make sure that you clear the contents or there are many apis available in google to actually uh, you know delete this uuid from your slash data path and uh, you know from your cluster so that it doesn't conflict the other nodes okay so let's check the other node as well yes node 2 same cluster same uuid right and you also uh, you get some information like uh, what build type it is what flavor what snapshot it is i mean i, I didn't use any snapshot i mean snapshot sorry uh, right and you also can see the version of your elastic search okay now the next thing is we need to install uh, kibana okay first thing is elastic search the next thing is kibana so i have already installed kibana as well so as you can see here i have every I have all the uh, Debian packages inst inside my VM. Okay, I have already installed Kibana dot Debian package. Okay, let me show you the configuration file of it. It's pretty simple uh, for now because we are not using SSL as such for now. In a bit, we would be doing that as well. Okay, so this is the configuration file. It's very basic. So this is going to give the server port on which the Kibana dashboard is going to be configured and then we are going to give the host address so let's leave it with the ip address of this machine and the hosts so we need to enter what are all the elastic search ips available in the same cluster so that it uh, kibana can scan all those elastic search nodes and get the data from them and i have given logging.verbers true so that it gets uh, logged in its uh, default log directory that is where log kibana so I'll show that in, uh, I'll show it to you in some time, but let's verify if it's up and running. Yes, Kibana is up and running and let's see if the port number is open. Okay, so 5601 is serving on this uh, IP address. All right, so let's check that as well. So uh, one other information is that to be noted it would not uh, once you start your kibana uh, service over here it would not start as soon as possible okay it would take maybe a few minutes uh, based on your server specs so my server is only three gigs of memory so it took about five to ten minutes for my kibana uh, dashboard to be displayed in case it is not i mean it's just starting i'll show you how it is going to be so once i do a restart okay so it's like a fresh start if i do that uh, what would happen is the port number will be available okay so the port number once the port number is available you will see here that kibana is running it will say kibana server is not ready yet but over here if you check the status the kibana service will be up and running so this would take about maybe a minute or two for the dashboard to display as you can see here 
first it said kibana server is not yet ready now it's saying i mean it's displaying the actual dashboard okay all right that's it with the part one video of elk configuration if you like this video give us a thumbs up and stay tuned for the part two by clicking on the subscribe button and press the bell icon thank you guys